Hi, I'm Michael Cashew. And I'm Adi Cashew, and you're listening to The WAG Podcast. This podcast is about health, wellness, and personal development. Each episode is a short conversation between Adi and I on a single topic with actionable steps. We cover everything from food, mindset, fitness, and relationships. We started WAG because of the way health and fitness changed our lives, so we hope to share a tool or two that helps you along your way. Hello. Hi. Welcome back, everyone. Welcome back. Mm, we've got a couple things to tell you before we get the show started. Mm-hmm. One, I'm sure some of you are getting tired of this, but we're about to get this thing rolling. We are about to start answering your questions on the show. If you don't know what I'm talking about, here it is. Uh, we're starting to make this podcast a little bit of a conversation back and forth between you and I, or you and us. And Mm -hmm. basically we're giving people the opportunity. We're giving you the opportunity to ask any question uh, that you have of us, lifestyle related, nutrition, fitness, relationships, et cetera, and have us answer it right here on the show. So we're going to start answering, you know, we have one plan that's going to be just one question and an answer. It's a full episode. Some of them might be like rapid fires. Uh, Anyway, we're really, really excited to start I don't know, collaborating, communicating with you guys like this. And so if you're interested, you can go to workingagainstgravity.com backslash podcast and scroll down to the start recording button, leave your name, your where you're from, and very clearly articulate your question. One question. A lot of people have been leaving three questions. That's going to get hard. Do yeah. one question for one us. Question. That would be great. And try to not have your dog or your baby in the background because... Although we think they're cute. Oh, they're so they're so cute. <laughs> but it makes it... It's going to make it much better to put onto the podcast yeah. for other people to listen to. And and I, I think I made a mistake in the last episode that we just recorded. I said that this episode we were going to start answering questions. So that's not the truth. We're starting to answer questions in the next episode. <laughs> one day. One day, one soon. day, <laughs> one episode soon. I, I was, I was, mis- I misspoken. Misspeak, Mis- mistaken, <laughs> misspoke. <laughs> I misspoke. Next, um, what is WAG? Why, why, who are we? What do we even do? Uh, we, we realize that a lot of times we just roll right into the show. And although a lot of you are current or former members, or you just know a lot about us, a handful of people, some people don't know anything about us. So, what do we do? We are an online nutrition coaching company. So we do a couple things. Our main thing that we've been doing for the past five years, since 2014, we have been coaching people to find a nutrition program that fits their lifestyle. So we pair you with a coach, a real human being who's been through the process before and has seen success for themselves, has a lot of experience working with people from all walks of life, and we give you habits, behaviors, and strategies, and a nutrition program to follow. We just hand them right over. Yeah, we just hand them right over. And we help you along the way. So we keep you accountable. We help you in difficult moments in celebrating your successes and um, make sure that you have all the resources that you need to achieve your results with also enjoying your life at the same time. And And that's that other thing. Yeah, we also train nutrition coaches so if you you know love fitness and nutrition and you're super passionate about it and you want to turn that into an impact in other people's lives we can help you learn how to do that so we teach about the science of nutrition as well as the art of coaching and give you some resources and how to start your own nutrition business so that is um what we do as well boom let's talk about cole sager because that dude's body Mm -mm -mm -mm. you know it's funny so Sometimes Michael comes into my office and I'm like doing check-ins or checking in with athletes. And then every once in a while he comes in and I'm doing Cole's check-in. And then Cole's photos are up on my screen and he's like, dang, Cole. <laughs> I never say dang. You know? Ever. Oh, okay. We were like. But I was like, damn, Cole. That's <laughs> <laughs> Same thing. <laughs> that dude's got a great body. Yeah, he does. And. Probably the best body in CrossFit, the, I, I think. think. all the dudes are like, how do I get a body like that? <laughs> I'm certainly like that at times. And and the other day I did walk in um, 
and Cole, she wasn't, she wasn't trying to show me. I just happened to walk in <laughs> and I was like, motherfucker, how does he do that? On one hand, I know, I know I'm not willing to put in the work to actually have the body that he has, mm-hmm. like the, the level of consistency and the amount of exercise that he does. I'm mm-hmm. just not willing to put it in. But there are some other things that are much more accessible to me and other kind of average Joes that he's doing that other people just aren't that I think could help us like really level up in our nutrition. Yeah, he's definitely... Um as much as he is the elite of the elite, he's also humble and down to earth and is doing things that anybody could do as well. And for the two to three people listening that don't know who Cole is, he is a three, four, five time CrossFit Games athlete, one of the best in history. Um, He's also a former track athlete and he's just a phenomenal guy, phenomenal athlete and I think he has the best male body in the sport. And I just want to clear one thing up before we mm-hmm. before we talk yeah. about how he got this body. The way he looks is like a byproduct. A byproduct. He cares about that maybe 1% as much as he does as his performance. He is mm-hmm. first and foremost an athlete. He is so dedicated to his craft and he just so happens to be shredded. Yeah. He's pretty, yeah. So, <laughs> before we did we before we started recording, I had you think deeply about what he's doing that other people aren't yeah and i asked and him you as ca- well and you ca- and y'all together you came up with a handful of things yeah and the first is that he asks questions and plays an active role in the process what do you mean by that so sometimes when you start working with a coach or you start some type of program um, a really good athlete will do what their coach says i do, do believe that a good athlete will do what their coach says um a great athlete will ask why their coach is asking them to do that or they will provide suggestions to their coach in terms of the program as well so a coach is has tons of experience in programming and working with different people and the same in nutrition as well as in fitness and they have a lot of experience like what to see and how to help people progress like what the next steps they can see the bigger picture and they're less emotionally attached to it than you but you know the most about yourself so you know if you're feeling good, if what types of foods make you feel which way, um, if you're tired, if you have lots of energy, if you're ready to go and train the next day. Um, it, you know, you have so much information that your coach is just not going to get access to. Um, as well as following blindly, kind of like not asking any questions and just doing what your coach tells you to do. That is a, is a subtle way of justifying not taking responsibility for your own success it's a subtle way of being like well i did what my coach said Mm -hmm. and i didn't get the results i wanted well your coach is giving you the program based on the information that they have and you have a lot of information that they don't have so it would be to your benefit to play an active role in that process and cole does a really amazing job of doing that for sure is there a way because i could see some people giving input to their coach I could, I could see them giving this feedback in multiple ways and some of those ways being really annoying and even threatening to the coach which if it's threatening that's on the coach but is there a way that cole goes about giving you this feedback and this information that has you receive it um i don't know in a really loving and supportive way yeah. rather than feeling threatened yeah i do think there is something to point out about what you said about the whole feeling threatened Um, I do think a marker of a great coach is somebody that can accept the questions and feels confident in what they're doing as well as is open to being wrong. So I already have the mindset of appreciating feedback and wanting the questions for myself because sometimes, you know, I get it wrong and I need need that help. Um, But aside from that, I think he really does do a good job of asking me um, questions in a way that he reminds me that he trusts me. Mm -hmm. Like, hey... I trust you. I, you know, I'm here. I'm like, I have full, I'm fully bought into this program. I just want to have a better understanding of what's going on. He's, he, or he'll provide a suggestion like, hey, this is how I'm feeling. How would you feel about trying X, Y, Z? But ultimately it's up to you. And whatever you decide is like what I'm going to fall. Like he'll say stuff like that. And I'm sure if I just like, arbitrarily was like no i'm not listening to you he'd be like well that doesn't make any sense you Mm -hmm. know like he's a smart guy um but he does soften it a little bit being like 
hey, like I trust you. I'm I just want to understand a little bit more for myself. Mm -hmm. And I also understand that I want Cole to be able to make these decisions for himself. He can't rely on me forever. Mm -hmm. I don't want him to be dependent on me. Like there's uh, so there's moments where, you know, two weeks before the CrossFit Games, you and I went on vacation and we weren't checking in with I wasn't checking in with any of the athletes. And it's like if he needed something at that time, he has enough experience working with me for three or four years that he can make decisions for himself now. I mm -hmm. want him to build that education. So um, it's a mixture of having a good coach who is willing to take questions. Um, and if you want to find that out, just ask your coach like, hey, is it cool if I ask some questions about the program just so I can get a better understanding? And then you can get a feel before you just say, just bust out your question, mm -hmm. you know, like, would you be open to me just like, I really want to understand. I want to educate myself. Would you be open to me asking you some questions about what's going on? Yeah. In a perfect world, you would just be able to ask them and they would look at it objectively and not feel threatened. But we're, we're not in a perfect world. Mm -hmm. Coaches are human. And so it will help your relationship if you treat them like a friend and just let them know, like, you know, they're your coach, you trust them, you you believe in them, and you just want to like yeah. collaborate with them in the yeah. process. Yeah. And I do think, I mean, Cole didn't necessarily ask me from the beginning, like, would you be open to me asking you questions? Mm -hmm. I'm pretty sure I was like, if you have any questions, mm -hmm. please ask them. Um, so I think that helped him be able to ask questions, but you can ask your coach that. Awesome. The second one that you told me was that he stopped looking for the magic bullet. Mm -hmm. Yeah. One a story that um, like Cole and I have been through together, we worked together for a year and then going into his second CrossFit Games, like so with us working together, um, a couple months before regionals, he really wanted to like switch up his entire nutrition program. And he gave me this like long list of like all of these things that he wanted to try. Mm -hmm. And I was definitely hesitant. And I, I was like, you know, let's try it. I, giving him full disclosure that I didn't think it was necessarily the best idea, but hey, let's try it. And then he ended up actually leaving me for three months. I think we weren't together from after regionals and then until after the CrossFit Games. And um, when him and I discussed that in retrospect, there was a little bit of this nervousness or this like wanting to uncover every stone or see you know that there maybe there's like this secret there's this magic formula out there that he's missing that it's he doesn't have that would give him that extra edge and he went searching for it for sure and I was like totally all about it he was like working with somebody else I'm like that's totally great three months later he ends up coming back and at that point I think he had re learned the lesson of there is no magic secret and it's really about consistency and hard work and belief in yourself and just trying to be better every single day. It's not, there's no like secret key. Mm -hmm. um, so now it's, he can catches himself sooner when he's like getting a little bit nervous or a little bit um, anxious. Like you're getting close to a big event. It's like the pressure is a lot higher. It's like, what could I do to push myself? There's a lot more trust that, He's doing what he already needs to do. Mm -hmm. How does that relate to people that are not CrossFit Games athletes? So for just anyone who, especially when it comes to nutrition and fitness, I am very confident that there's not a secret out there. There is what works for you, what you can be consistent with, and and being consistent, like the hard work and discipline that you need. And when I see people looking for some type of magic pill or secret sauce that might exist somewhere out there in unicorn land, it's generally because they're frustrated with the pace of their progress or they're really nervous about something. Like there's a lot of pressure building up. So if you're trying to like lose weight and you're, it's not happening as fast as you would like it to, which is kind of outside of your control, that's when I see people like looking for, okay, maybe what I'm doing isn't working. Maybe I should just like cut carbs entirely or maybe I should go – go keto or maybe I should um, be paleo or maybe I should be vegetarian and they just start switching from thing to thing to thing to thing to thing and switching things is not the problem the problem is doing it super rash and impulsively and doing it for the reason of I haven't seen like 
the exact results I was looking for and you haven't been consistent for long enough and all of it's going to take time all of it's going to take time and I think that's something people just have to accept yeah and people start focusing on the diet rather than their behaviors Mm -hmm. right their habits Mm -hmm. exactly and it's it's more complex than that. And unfortunately, it takes a lot, a lot of time. Most people listening to this podcast that want to make a change, they've probably been, they're probably in their 20s or their 30s or their 40s. And you've probably taken all of your life to get to where you are right now. Just imagine how, you can't just reverse all of that overnight. It doesn't take six months to reverse all of that. And if it does, then you, you're you an outlier. Mm-hmm. That's the minority. Mm-hmm. So the next one is that he is super patient. Mm-hmm. This one sounds super boring, but mm-hmm. tell me about it. Yeah, I I would I would bet that if you spent a couple weeks with Cole in the middle of his training, his life would be super boring. It would be train, eat, sleep, train, eat, sleep, wake up, train, eat, sleep. You know, it's just super boring, and he just masters the mundane. He just finds joy in even the most mundane things and understands that this just all takes time. He's been, he wants to win the CrossFit Games. He wants to do the best that he possibly can in his sport. He wants to inspire others. And he knows that that's going to take time and showing up every day. And it's not something given to you. It's something earned. Mm -hmm. And when you want to earn something, it's going to take patience. Um, And that's something I really admire about Cole for sure. Yeah, that's a, that's a virtue that, I've notoriously been terrible at, but I realize now, like looking back, all of the things that I really value about myself, whether it be personality or achievements or whatever it may be, have all taken a tremendous amount of time. So I have to, um, and there are things that I've just loved doing, and that's why I was willing to put in all of the time and effort to see them through and to build the skills and to have those achievements. Mm -hmm. And without the patience, you can get stuck in thinking that you should be somewhere that you're not. Mm -hmm. Um, Patience usually comes also with compassion for yourself and knowing that you're exactly where you're supposed to be. And Cole is one of those people who's like really grateful for every single minute of every day to just be able to go and train and do what he loves to do. Mm -hmm. And that's um, something we can all learn from. The last one is get your partner on board. Yeah. Genesee has been working with me as well. Dude, she's a beast. Yeah, she's such a beast. Like, She just did a marathon on a whim with Cole the other day. She pushes him to do that kind of thing. It's like the coolest thing ever. Um, We have a really cool YouTube series on the Sagers, and their relationship is so inspiring. I mean, we love talking about relationship. We talk about our relationship a lot. They are a relationship that I am inspired by. Um, I also get to, like, see them in an intimate kind of way. Not that kind of an intimate way, but I haven't seen these pictures. <laughs> <laughs> no, not that kind of a way. But I mean, I talked to them. I've talked to Genesee and Cole every single week for almost four years. So I just know them in intimately. Like they're my friends mm-hmm. and we're like pen pals. And she is such a beast. And she didn't start doing this when um he started she started afterwards and the way the thing that's like really amazing and i think that really benefits cole and his success is she is totally on board in supporting cole to be the athlete that he is and i think there's a mutual understanding between the two of them that it's not just cole's career like this is their family you know like cole being more successful also means she's more successful and she takes some ownership over those um, those su- successes, mm-hmm. and he also gives her ownership over those successes. He says we and yes. team. Yes, like definitely it's a team. There's definitely a we. Like her, when we're preparing for the CrossFit Games, I'm giving Genesee some tips and strategies for how to get Cole ready for mm-hmm. the CrossFit Games. Mm-hmm. You know, like there's <laughs> they're definitely a team, and not every single person can have this. Um, but I think what lesson you can learn from it is that your environment is going to make things either much easier for you or much more difficult for you and your environment very much includes your social situation so if you're single and all of your friends are drinking beers and partying every single weekend then you're probably having a ton of fun (laughs) maybe (laughs) um or you're probably going to drink beers and party like maybe you're not going to drink as many beers as your friends but you're probably you're probably going to do that more often than not so the people that you're around and um them being 
a part of it with you is going to really help you be successful. And that doesn't mean you should force people or make them feel bad if they're not. Um, it's just choose your community carefully. Mm-hmm. Okay, I have a couple of follow-ups. First off, most of you listening are not going to be in the scenario that Cole and Genesee are in mm-hmm. where Genesee is supporting Cole to win the CrossFit Games. Yeah. It's more like, obviously, both both you and your partner or you and, you and a friend maybe are going through this journey Par- uh, parallel, like yeah. side by side, like mm-hmm. you're both, you're both trying to conquer something yeah, in your nutrition. Like, I think you and I would be a better example. Mm-hmm. Like when I'm interested in dialing in my nutrition, I have a conversation with you about what I'm looking for, what would help me. And you ask questions on how you can be more supportive. And then you're much more conscious of the things that you'll do around me. And it's the same vice versa. Mm-hmm. Like you want to lose a couple pounds. I'm like, okay, what types of meals can I make? What if if I if you're wanting to lose a couple pounds and I'm like, let's go for pizza, that's totally not conducive mm-hmm. to supporting you with your goals. Cause I know you're probably gonna say yes. And that's true. <laughs> yeah. So um yeah, we're not trying to win the CrossFit games, but we want each other to be the best versions of ourselves. And I know for any of you that's a partner that's like, Oh, I hate that my partner's so obsessed with fitness and nutrition. Um you being fitter and more dialed in with your nutrition makes you a better person for your partner and them being fitter and loving their bodies more makes them a better partner for you so supporting them is not just for them it's actually for you that mindset shift is huge Mm -hmm. like you when i realized so i went there's an episode i think nutritional freedom might be the episode where i talked about my transition from being an athlete and going through this like identity crisis and like gaining weight. I gained like 16 pounds or something like that. And I felt terrible in my body. And then there was this moment where I had a conversation with you and we were talking, it came out somehow that I'm just nicer when I'm happier in my body. Like I'm a nicer person. I'm friendlier. I'm, I'm less irritable and I'm a better wife. Mm -hmm. And I want to be that. And when I realized that that was impacting you, in that way and it wasn't just a me thing that completely shifted things for me and i think it um i think it shifted things for you as a partner like you want to be more helpful because you know it actually helps you as Mm -hmm. well Mm -hmm. i love that so back to like how to get your partner on board what what's an appropriate way to do that you just had a live cast kind of about this last night uh, in our members group. What, what, how can people approach their partner in a really compassionate and non-pushy way? Yeah, my p- live cast is about enrolling other people in to, to join for them. For them. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think it's going to be like a dynamic situation. It really depends on who it is. Um, one thing is I wouldn't, I would avoid forcing it. Like don't force it. Uh, if someone is not open to making a change and they're just they're not in that place yet forcing it is going to make it more difficult for you to ever be able to help them make that change but um yeah you could turn yourself into like an enemy in this area mm -hmm. rather than a teammate yeah it's really hard um it is hard with your partner what how do how do how do we do it um, I mean, I think we're a little bit different because we run a nutrition company, but I think that uh, a, an appropriate way is like if, if it's your partner, then you know that you, you've heard them either complain about something about their body or talk about a goal that they have in their nutrition. And like if they're already crushing it, they're already crushing it, right? Mm-hmm. Um, if they're not, then you will have heard that. And whether it's positive or negative, <clears throat> and you can, like I think the best way to <clears throat> to, we use the role, word enroll, but it kind of me- means like motivate or, um, yeah, like motivate someone to do something is to bring up their goal or their pain point and say something like, hey, I know you've been talking a lot about, um, you know, wanting to lose 10 pounds and I've seen you struggling in X, Y, and Z ways. Um, I'm I'm doing this for myself because, you know, I feel like, um, like I really want to, I, I really want to challenge myself and see what I'm made of, and uh, I really think that I can do this, and I it would re- it would really help me if you did this, but I think it would also 
um, contribute to your goals. Mm -hmm. So as, as much as possible, make it about, make it about them without being pushy. Yeah. And I think when you talk about something being effective or not, talk straight from your own experience. Mm -hmm. I would definitely stay away from being like, I know this will work for you Mm -hmm. because that'll immediately incite some resistance Mm -hmm. generally of Mm -hmm. like, you don't know what works for me. I know me. You don't know me. Even if it's your partner that you've been married to for a million years. So um, talk from your own experience. And then if your partner's already like maybe fitness and nutrition isn't part of their goals, just have an open and honest conversation about how what your goals are and what that would mean to you and how that would impact them. Like it would make me nicer, happier, Mm -hmm. friendlier, a better wife. And you helping me do that helps you. Mm -hmm. It's not just like you're inconveniencing yourself for me and my goals. It's our goals Mm -hmm. together. Um, And hopefully that helps. That's huge. Okay. Mm -hmm. To wrap it all up, what does Cole do that others aren't? One, he asks a lot of questions and he plays an active role in the process. He's very engaged and he does it really tactfully. The second is that he has stopped looking for a magic bullet and he realizes that things take hard work and you have to build skills and capabilities to be able to maintain results long term. Mm-hmm. The, number, the third one is he's really, really patient and he just shows up day after day without expectations. And fourth is he has a rock star partner that he has on board with him um, that really supports him and shares in this journey. And they have a community around them too. So that really helps. Yeah, get one of those. (laughs) Awesome. Thank you, Adi. Thanks, guys. Bye. Thanks for joining us. Stay in touch by signing up for our newsletter at workingagainstgravity.com or on Instagram at workingagainstgravity. Don't forget to subscribe to us on iTunes, leave us a five-star review, and refer a friend. We'll be back next week with another episode. Talk to you then.